Hello, and welcome to Code Pro, your source for helpful and effective programming tutorials. In today's tutorial, we are going to learn the basics of WatchKit and how to make a watch application that has a table view that lets you click into a detail view. This is pretty similar to a table view in a detail view controller in an iOS application. So let's take a quick look at what we're going to build today. Here you'll see I have two simulators. I have my iPhone simulator here and my watch simulator here. And what I have here is uh, just a couple of entries in a table view. And if I click on any one of these rows, it'll take me into a detailed view for that particular entry. Uh, so this is what we're going to build today. It's pretty basic. Um, so go ahead and open Xcode, and let's get started. All right, so with Xcode open, go ahead and hit File and uh, New Project. And by default, it'll select iOS for you. Um, you'll want to select Watch OS and do an iOS app with the WatchKit app. So go ahead and hit next, name your project, place it where you want to, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the structure of the project next. So with the project created, you'll notice that there's a couple of differences here uh, compared to a regular iOS application project. Uh, notably, we have additional targets. Uh, we have the actual WatchKit app and the app extension as additional targets, um, whereas with an iOS application, we just have an iOS application target instead. Uh, so we're going to be working in the WatchKit sections here, and if we go into the interface storyboard, you'll see some of the starting screens that we have for the watch as it looks right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and set up our first interface controller. You can think of the interface controller as the uh, WatchKit equivalent of a view controller in an iOS application. Uh, so all, most of our UI work is going to be connected back to an interface controller in some way, shape, or form. Uh, so the first thing we want to do to set up our list to our table view is go down into our little object library here and look for a table view. So if you type in table, uh, you'll get back a UI element for it. And what we want to do is drag this onto our interface controller. And uh, you'll see that over in here, uh, with this section expanded, um, we have our table. We have our table row controller. Uh, and then we have uh, a group in here. So let's go ahead and get this further set up so that we can connect it back into our code file. So with your interface controller selected, if you go to the identity inspector here, you'll notice that the class interface controller is already selected for us. So that means that our interface controller.swift file um, is the class that's going to be linked to this interface controller here in the storyboard. Um, so what we want to do now is go ahead and start linking things back to our interface controller via IB outlets. Uh, so let's go ahead and open the assistant editor here, and we'll just go ahead and create some space. And the first thing we're going to want to do is take our table by selecting it from here. And, oh, if you don't have your little side window open here, you can open and close it by selecting this little icon here. Um, so with table selected, you want to hold down the control, uh, control key, click and drag, and we're going to go over here and release that. And we're just going to go ahead and call this uh, table view to create the interface builder outlet connection from our code file back to our storyboard here. So the next thing we're going to want to do is start working on our table row controller. And if you see here, if I select it, it actually highlights the row in our WatchKit table. So one thing to note here is that the kind of class that it's looking for is an NS object. So if we make any elements of a uh, table row controller, we're going to want a subclass uh, or make sure that class is uh, of type NS object. So let's go ahead and start building that piece now. Uh, go over to your file hierarchy and select your WatchKit extension part. And you can see that's where it keeps all of your other code files. And we'll go ahead and hit right click and add a new file. And we'll do a Swift file. And we'll just go ahead and call this uh, row controller. And very important, make sure that your actual WatchKit extension not the watch app, is the selected target here, or you're going to have some problems where the code file is in the wrong spot. Uh, so go ahead and hit Create, and let's go ahead and start building out that class. So we're going to want to call this class row controller, uh, which is going to derive from NS object here. And we're also going to want to make sure that we import uh, watch kit here. So when we hook up our elements, that they'll actually be found from that framework. And let's go back into the interface storyboard here. And uh, we'll go ahead and go back over into the identity inspector. And we're going to change the class to, uh, instead of just nothing, to the row controller NS object type class that we just made here. 
And so now we have that linked up so that every row of this um, table is going to have a, a row controller that links back to the class that we just made. So the one thing we want to do here is go ahead and hook up the label that we have on each row. So search for label and what you'll see you'll get a label UI type that comes back and we can go ahead and drag that onto our table row here and uh, if we want to position that we can kind of drag it to the end and uh, try and get that nice and flushed and uh, let's go into the attributes inspector and see if we can make that a little bit prettier um, the alignment I can center that text and I think that should be good for now I might change this from left to center and from top to center as well Okay, and what we want to do now is hook up the uh, interface builder connection uh, for the label that we just added. So if we find our row controller class we just made, and we'll just give ourselves a little bit of space here. Uh, using the same idea, we can hold down the control key uh, over the label element and we can click and drag, and we can create a new uh, IB outlet to our row controller class here. And I'll just call this uh, detail, or just how about row label. And sometimes you have to actually build your project for those changes to show up. So let me just let that build and we'll go ahead and drag that back one more time. And so we'll try that again. Uh, row label. And sure enough, uh, we're able to find it there. So now let's pop back into our interface controller and actually start working in here from uh, building this out. So let's uh, digest a little bit of what's going on in here. Um, you'll notice that by default we have three overridden uh, methods for us awake with uh, context of type any, um, an optional type to note as well, and then a will activate and a did deactivate method. Now you can kind of think of these as the equivalents of like view did load or uh, view will appear, view will disappear in a iOS app view controller. Um, and uh, a lot of the work um, for a view did load kind of setting you're going to take care of in awake with context. Um, so we're going to create a method here called load data source, and this is going to feed our data to the table, and that's going to be our starting point. So let's go ahead and create a new function, private func load table data, and we're going to call that from awake with context here. And the next step we want to do is create a little dummy data source. So I'm going to just create an array of strings and we're just going to call this uh, table data and we'll set that equal to just some string values I'm just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So go back into your load table data method and let's first of all set the number of rows for the table view. So if we start typing table view uh, we'll, we'll be referencing the one that we made the outlet for earlier and if we look for a dot set number of rows uh, you can see that there's uh, one particular method that comes up here and we'll set the number of rows equal to the, um, the count of the elements in our table data array up above so we'll just go ahead and say table data dot count and with row type now with the row type we're going to say it's going to be our row controller and that's basically saying that that's the type of row that every element in this table is going to be of. Um, and let's go ahead and actually start um, binding our, uh, our strings to our row, each row of our table. So uh, we're going to create another little loop here. Uh, we're going to do a for uh, index and row model in table data dot enumerated which is basically going to iterate through each element or each uh, each entry of our table data array um, row model will correspond to any one of these elements such as one two three four five and six and it'll also give us the index uh, that corresponds for that particular row and so the next thing we want to do is um, set the detail text so we can do we, we need to get each basically each row uh, of our table. So if let row controller equal table view dot row controller at and the index is what we're going to provide there and we'll just optionally 
cast that as row controller. And uh, assuming we get back a successful row controller, we'll say row controller dot row label, which is the label that we set to it earlier, dot set text equal to row model. And that will actually bind uh, every element of our array to every uh, element of our table there. And one last thing we need to do is actually set the identifier to, for the row controller. Um, if we don't set the identifier, when we try to find any particular row controller at an index, uh, we won't get anything back if no identifier has been set that matches uh, what we're looking for. So go back to interface.storyboard and make sure you have row controller selected here. And you'll see that there is a little section in the attribute inspector for the identifier. And I'm just going to call mine uh, row controller. Just keep the, keep the naming consistent. And now we're all set to go ahead and see what this looks like. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is run it in the simulator uh, or in the real devices if, if you have it. And by default, a lot of times the project will be uh, the iOS application. But what you want to do is click the different targets you have available. And you're going to want to go to the uh, WatchKit app and have that selected. And that will open up some different simulator options here. So now you can run your app with an iPhone 8 or you know an iPhone plus an Apple Watch for a particular type. So let's go ahead and run that and see what it looks like. So with my simulators open, uh, everything looks good. Uh, we can see the uh, rows I've got here, one through six, uh, scrollable. However, when I select them, nothing happens. And that reason uh, for that is we haven't hooked up the detail interface controller yet. So let's go ahead and build that out right now. So go back to your interface uh, that storyboard here, and we're going to drag another interface controller onto the canvas. So go ahead and go uh, f look for interface controller um, here. And it's usually the first thing that comes up. Uh, if not, you can type it in here and look for it. So drag interface controller onto the storyboard. And let's go ahead and create the uh, class uh, interface controller that we're going to use for it. So go to your watch extension folder over here in the hierarchy. And right click and hit new file. We'll do a new Swift file. And let's go ahead and call this detail interface controller. And uh, make sure uh, your WatchKit app extension is the selected target and hit Create. So let's import WatchKit. And let's create our actual class. Class Detail Interface Controller of type WK, Interface Controller. Let's go ahead and override our awake with context. and uh, we'll activate and did deactivate. So with all that set up, let's also uh, go back to our storyboard here and let's actually do that in the assistant editor uh, so we can add our label uh, to the uh, detail interface controller. Uh, so let's find our um, new interface controller that we added here and this is the one I just created, so I'm going to go ahead and select it. And you'll see that it doesn't have a uh, subclass selected yet. So what we want to do is go ahead and say this is our detail interface controller. Uh, we want to also give it an identifier here. Uh, and I'm just going to reuse the same identifier, so that way when we push from one interface controller to another, the identifier will be used from here to find that particular interface controller and then load it. So we're just going to call this uh, detail interface controller. And let's grab a label from down here and drag that onto our interface controller. And this is going to be our detail label. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this a little bit larger. I'm going to center the text. And I'm going to try to align this in the center of uh, our interface controller and kind of bring it all the way out there. Um, and so with that being said, we want to hook up the interface builder outlet for this label. So we'll go and hold down the control key, click and drag, and release that on our detail interface controller class. And we'll just go ahead and call this detail label and create that connection. And sometimes I can't find it, so you'll want to build your project. And this is just a quirk of Xcode. Uh, it needs to compile those changes in so it knows where to find everything and then control click and drag again 
detail label. And sure enough, we found it without issue. So we're almost done here. Uh, we need to do two last little things to get this hooked up. Go back to your interface controller, that's Swift. And let's go ahead and close our system editor here and just keep the main one open. And we need to override another method. Um, and this is going to be did select row at uh, the row index. Uh, so anytime that you click a row in our table view, uh, that's going to trigger this method here with the index that you selected uh, and the table that you selected. And uh, so what we're going to want to do here is push controller with name. Now this is why the identifier was important from what we hooked up in detail interface controller because uh, this is basically saying, hey, find the interface controller for this name, detail interface controller, and provide it with a context that we can or don't have to provide because it's an optional. Um, and what that context is going to be is the data that we want to pass from this interface controller to the detail one that we want to load up. Now, since it could be of any type, what I'm going to say is I want to pass it the particular row that was selected in our table. And to do that, it's quite simple. Um, I can simply just do table data at the row index. So if I click on the second element in the table, that's going to find for the index the value 2. And it's going to take this string and fire that off to the detail interface controller, uh, which will bind that to the label text. So we're almost done. We have to just actually bind up the text now, and uh, we'll be good to go. So go back into detail interface controller Swift, and we want to go into our awake with context. So you can kind of think of um, in our interface controller, we were kicking off our context uh, to the detail interface controller in our did select row right here. So when you kind of think like, okay, we fire off our context and our information from here that we want to share in the detail interface controller. So when it gets called with its awake with context, it has that data that we just sent. So the one thing we can do is get that data. So we can just look for um, if let uh, detail data equals context as a type string, because this can be any type, but we know that we're providing in a string here, so we're going to try to unwrap it here. Uh, we can just say that detail label dot set text to detail data. And let me just fix my spelling here. And that's it. Let's go ahead and run that and see what it looks like. So simulator's open, and I've got my, uh, my watch app. And if I select any element here, we go into the detail view and we bind the label. Uh, same thing for the other element, and so on and so forth. All that's pretty good. Um, if you want to change the colors, <clears throat> that's quite simple. If you go back to your interface storyboard, and uh, you go into your table, and you look for this group element here, if you go to the attribute inspector, there's a color property here. If you change that to uh, something different, it'll change the color of the row. Uh, same thing in your detail interface controller. If you select that uh, and you go, and there's also a color property here. If you change that, that'll actually change the color uh, of that interface controller there. So that wraps up uh, our tutorial for today. Um, we covered the basics of WatchKit, how to create a simple table view application with a detail view and then had to pass data back and forth between the two of them. Uh, so you'll find this uh, completed project available on GitHub. The uh, link is down below in the description. And um, if you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button and uh, make sure you subscribe for more future tutorials to come. Thank you so much for stopping by.